Juan Lahara, I just sent you a uh, message on chat and an email. Yes, I did hear you. Thank you.
Quan, can, could you send that offense report again? I'll, I'll do it right now. Good morning, now. everyone. This is Thank the you. detention docket for the 323rd District Court for Monday, February 8th, 2021. In compliance with the Texas Supreme Court Emergency Order Number 33, we are not conducting in-person proceedings when possible. So we are using Zoom to broadcast these proceedings to comply with Texas Open Courts Act. We are broadcasting these proceedings on YouTube so the public has meaningful access to our public courts. However, I'd like to remind people this is still a court proceeding, and so people are expected to behave appropriately. So please refrain from having bright lights from behind your head, which tend to shadow out your face. Um, please have your cameras on unless you are an officer of the court. That would mean, it looks like all the parents have the cameras on. Uh, you're expected to behave appropriately for court, so please not be laying down, using the restroom, taking showers, eating food, or having domesticated animals cross the screen. So let's get this started. We'll start with Cameron Newton. Do we have Mr. Newton here? We do, Your Honor. He's in the SO plea. Mr. Newton. Mr. Newton, can you hear me? Cameron, can you wave? You see him? Oh, there we go. All right. All right, Mr. Newton, this is a 10 day hearing. You're currently in the Tarrant County Jail, but we still have to have these hearings every 10 days with your case, whether to release you or keep you here. If I keep you here, you need to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Your attorney, Ms. Keenan, I believe is here. Uh, says Perkins. I'm here, Connor. So, all right. Cameron, this is the robbery call on Caverly, all right, uh, at the home. And this is where an AR-15 was thrown inside a trash can by TCC. So, and at the time you were on probation for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. Well, Ms. Keenan, where are we on this case? We're just well, on a trial? We are actually here on a trial docket for um, April 19th. However, I saw what the second court of appeals ruled on Friday or last week rather. Um, so I was actually gonna ask if he could be released because we don't know if we're actually gonna be able to even do those trials. Which, which, ruling, <clears throat> which ruling are you talking about? Day of any in-person hearing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So that's that should be it's the for the seeking the mandamus. Uh, okay. We should find out. Mr. Adler is the attorney on that case. <clears throat> so I think they extended the deadline for him to file a response to this Friday. Mr. Adler, is that correct? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. So I imagine for this, they they should come out with a decision within a week or two. I mean, within days or a week at most. But they'll move on this quickly. And so I don't want to quite set that off yet <clears throat> because this is set for April. Uh, second court may grant it the stay indefinitely or, I'm sorry, <clears throat> the second court may require me to put off everything. They may say I'm allowed to proceed or it, they may, um, depending on the ruling, the losing party may seek relief with the Supreme Court of Texas. So I'm not quite ready to set off yet just because we don't know what's going to happen. But of course, if they do, I'm, I'm going to comply with that. So I have no desire to appear in a show cause hearing. So um, at this point, we'll just see. I'll leave it on there, but we'll definitely move it off if we need to. That's not a problem. Okay, but I'm not going to push it if there's a, a, a mandamus comes down. All right. So Mr. Newton, I'm just, you know, the fact that you were on probation at the time for burglary vehicle and on how to use of a motor vehicle and this is involving a firearm and the firearm was discarded the way it was for some to find. I'm just very concerned about the safety community. Um, it seemed like you're having a lot of other problems on probation as well. So I don't know if the trial is gonna go on April 19th or not, but that's when we're scheduled for. Hopefully it does just so you can have resolution in your case. Right? But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and detain you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Reed. All right, next we have Hector Arevalo. Hector 
Hector, are you here? Hector? Hector. Judge, I think he's out of custody. Your Honor, he's supposed to be in the lobby. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. bringing him in. I'm bringing him in, Judge. Sorry. Okay, thank you. All right, Hector, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm making a decision whether to take you into custody or to leave you in the community. I take you into custody. The law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Uh, if you cannot afford, any, afford an attorney, we'll provide one for you. Mr. Adler has been appointed in the interim to be your attorney. All right, so Hector, you're 16 years old. Currently, you're on probation for, well, you had probation in 2019 for <clears throat> threatening or using a firearm at a school or bus. And I guess Maribel, was, did he finish that probation for the misdemeanor? Ms. Montalongo? Yes, sir. Okay. He, he, he completed his probation and then he came in for a new offense for aggravated robbery. Okay. So in June of last year, Hector, you got probation for aggravated robbery. Was that a determinate sentence? No, sir. Okay. How long was the probation for? Till his 18th birthday. All right. So Hector, last week we received a referral from Fort Worth PD. According to the police on October 30th of 2020, so that's just two months after you got probation. At about 2.30, they were dispatched for a shooting call. They met with four firefighters who was treating somebody for a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. When there's investigation, he said he was given a gun by Hector <clears throat> to store for him. Showed a Snapchat video that Hector had uploaded. In the Snapchat video, officers see an arm with the gun being fired as a Glock. The gun being fired was a Glock. It was found in Larry's room and it was stolen out of Pennsylvania. So you're being charged with the unlawful transfer of a handgun to somebody, providing a handgun to somebody who's under 18 years old. Ms. Montalongo, did it just look like an accidental shooting? Yes, sir. All right, so mom, are you here? Are you mom? Do you speak English? No. Mom, do you speak English? No. No? Mr. Adler, can you, or I guess, I don't know, Ms. Montalongo, can you ask her, like, where did the gun come from? Señora, ¿quiere saber el juez que de dónde vino, la, de dónde salió la pistola? No, 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 yo ni sabía que la pistola estaba en la casa. Mother advised that she didn't know that the gun was at the house. So the aggravated robbery that he's on probation for, did that involve, oh, that involved a knife and not a gun. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. He has not paid anything in restitution yet, has he? No, sir. How else has he done on probation? He's done very well on probation. He's working, doing online school. He says him and his mom are very responsible and report, check in with PO. Look, Hector, I have very little tolerance for kids that are on guns. I'm not sure what actually happened with Larry, but he's saying that you're the one that provided the gun to him, and it looks like apparently your Snapchat account shows a video with you around firearms. This is why you're on probation for aggravated robbery, and this is after you're on probation for threatening to, I guess, shoot up a school. So at this point, I'm just not comfortable keeping you in the community. Um, I just... I wish you kids would understand. I draw a line when kids have guns. I'm just not comfortable with it. I have a big problem because people end up getting shot either on purpose or by accident, which 
evidently is what happened now. Doctor, at this point, I'm going to take you into custody. We'll review your case and decide what to do, but this could be, this could end up being a bad situation for you. It looks like your hand is raised. Hector, if you have a question for me, I don't mind answering your question. If you want to tell me something, your attorney does not want you to tell me anything. I don't want you to tell me anything. I don't want you to put yourself in the spot. Okay. So do you have a question for me or do you want to tell me something? I got some evidence I want to show my attorney. Okay. That's your attorney. Okay. Your attorney will get in touch with you and then he will, that's something that that's important. Uh, hopefully that evidence shows that you had nothing to do with this, but at this point, I hope you understand why I'm making the decision that I'm making. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Hector, Mr. Alvarez. Oh, Ari Balo. Shabari Balo. Yes, sir. Right, Jabari, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you here, the law says you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. And we have appointed Mr. Willett as your attorney. Yes, sir. All right, so Jabari, you're 14 years old. Currently, I think you, let's see. So you have a pending case for assault causing bodily injury of a family member. And then now you're brought in because on New Year's Eve, police were dispatched for domestic. Mom said you were outside on the patio when she told you to come in. You were angry, threw rocks at her. First one missed, second one hit her. In January 15th, I released you at a 10 day detention hearing. February 5th, mom said you had actually run away. So, all right, so Mr. Crawl, he came in on Friday on the runaway. How do we find him? He ran away. Uh, I guess he returned to the house prior to when the cops arrived later. And so we had already issued a DTA at that point for him not being present. So do we have a parent here? Mom is not present that I'm aware of. I'm here. Oh, here she is. Okay, Miss Washpun, is that your name? Yes. Okay. So how long was he a runaway for? Um, he had ran on for about two hours. Do you know how long he was gone for? About two hours. Do you know where he went? Um, he was in the back of the property, and when he returned, he uh cursed me out and my friend and destroyed everything on my patio and proceeded to throw rocks at my window, trying to bust my windows out. So what is it with him and throwing rocks? That's just this, this what he do. He and, and all over, because he, he didn't want to clean his bathroom, he got caught doing something and he told me he wasn't going to do it. He'll just um, get in trouble for it. And that's when he ran off. So his cleaning bathrooms, that, that's one of his chores? Yeah. What other mm -hmm. chores does he have? Um, keeping his bathroom clean, his room, helping out around the house. And he doesn't, he doesn't want to do that. So he has, he, three, he has three chores to do. Mm -hmm. And do his work. And whenever I tell him to do something, or he get caught doing something he ain't got no business doing, this is when the rage come in and he runs off. Cursed me out and my friend, terribly. Are you taking the one we just did? No, I'm bringing it back. Okay, thank you. And, and he also said he not going to jail. He going out like Scarface. So when the police came, they had to physically uh, place him on the ground because he, he was not complying with their orders. Has you seen a mental health doctor? Um, I just got off the phone with JPS. I was able to get an appointment with him for um, April 6th. And he's also scheduled with um, Yes Waiver for March 25th. So he hasn't has not seen a doctor before. He has, and there hasn't been any official 
definitive diagnosis for him. So he's never been prescribed medication? He was like years ago when he was about 10. They put him on, on some medicine. But what, but was he, he, what was he diagnosed then? Um, they said he had um, ADHD and impulse disorder. He's very impulsive. You said his appointment with JPS was in April? April 6th, yes. All right, Jabari, at this point, I'm going to go and detain you, All right? I, uh, I'm worried about <clears throat> your behavior. You know, you only went away for about two hours. I don't know the conditions or the circumstances. It seems like I need to order a psychiatric exam for you. And so we can figure out if there's anything going on. If I do release you, it's going to be on the electronic monitor, right? And, well, you know, this whole thing about chores, I don't think... Like you kids don't understand, you've got two chores, four chores to do. Everything else to keep you alive, that's what your mom's doing. Those are her chores. Hey, that's what you understand. Like the fact that you're even living and fed and have a place to live, that's all because your mom's doing her chores. You doing four isn't really that much. So I don't get this. Uh, we'll go ahead and the doctor comes, I think, on Thursdays now. And so you'll have to see the doctor. Just be forthcoming with the doctor. We'll see if there's medication that can help you, if you need medication. All right, Jabari, I see that your hand is raised. If you have a question for me, I don't mind answering your question. If you want to tell me something, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and, and not say anything. Your attorney will not want you to do that. All right, so do you have a question for me? Do you want to tell me something? Um, I will have a question. Okay, what's your question? So, well, exactly what you just said, how did they find me? Uh, how am I a runaway if I'm on a panel? Uh, this doesn't sound like you have a question for me? Yes, I have a question. Okay, what's your question? So how am I going to consider a runaway? Because you weren't where your mom told you to be. Yeah, but I was on the path. Oh, well, I was on a runaway. I mean. Were you where your mom told you to be? It's hard to house. Were you where your mom told you to be? I said no. Were you where your mom told you to be? I said no. There you go. He's saying, he's saying he wasn't, Your Honor. Right. Okay. And that's 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 what it is. That's your point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to be where your mom tells you to be. That's the way it works. Wait till you're 18, then you can go wherever you want, or you can go nowhere. But, yeah, uh, I'm I can't wait for that day to come, too. Well, Mom, that's the thing is they'll come whether we like it or not, hopefully. <laughs> All right. And so the, the the question is, what can we do to help Jabari along the way? Right. In, in a position when he turns 18, that he can make good decisions. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. All right. Thank exactly. you, Jabari. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Eric Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez. All right, Mr. Hernandez, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you here, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Mr. Sierra has been appointed as your attorney. Derek, you're 15. You've never been here before. No, sir. On Friday at about 10 o'clock, Arlington PD went to domestic and talked with your mother, stepfather, and your brother. Said that there was a fight that began when you slapped your two and a half year old brother in the face for using a curse word. Mom became upset and tried to discipline you by slapping you in the face, but when you grabbed her hand to stop it, brother thought you might have hurt your mom, so he stepped in to stop it, and that evidently upset you, so you used both hands to push him in the bed, got on top, wait. So Eric, your brother used both hands to push on the bed, got on top of you, no, you pushed him, and that Jose is saying, then you used your left hand to choke him, for about 30 seconds. Mom was able to spread you two, separate you two. Officer saw scratches on mm -hmm. Jose's 
neck, but no marks on the two-year-old's face. You said that <laughs> you and Jose did have a fight, but only punched each other with body shots. And you only put hands on Jose to control him in order to punch him. So you brought over here. Do we have a parent here? Yes, Your Honor. Where's the parent? Mm. Oh, in the, there we go. There's, Mom, do you speak English? Mm. All right, well. Mr. Larha, I mean, really my main question is how are the fights usual between the brothers or is this something that's different? Señor, el juez quiere saber si las peleas entre José y Eric es una cosa que ocurre regularmente o no. No. No, Your Honor. No, which one? It doesn't occur regularly. How old is José? 17. Is mom worried about me releasing Eric back home to her? Señora, ¿está preocupada si el juez la deja que se lleve el niño a la casa? No. No, she's not. Not worried about the safety of the two-year-old? Señora, no, no está preocupada con la situación del niño que tiene dos años solamente. ¿No está preocupada que el niño puede estar en peligro? No. No, she's not. Well, I'm going to go ahead and trust mom then. I'm going to go ahead and release her back to mom. Mom needs to know that if Eric is causing problems at home, that she needs to let you know so we can bring him back here to detention. Señor, el juez lo va a dejar que se lo lleve a la casa. Pero él quiere asegurarse de que, de que si tiene problemas con Eric, nos tiene que llamar inmediatamente. ¿Ok? Ok. I want to make sure you understand. If, I'm not saying it happened, but if it did happen, do you understand how choking somebody escalates things to a different level that gives more concern? El juez también quiere que sepas que cuando hay una situación donde, donde un niño le pone las manos a otra persona en el cuello y, el, y le, le aprieta el cuello, es una situación que es bien peligrosa. Uh, ¿Ok? Quiere que tú sepas eso. Sí, entiendo. Eric, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Go home and do right. Okay. Do right to your mom. All right. Thank you, Honor. Thank you. Brian Hyder. Sir, uh, Mr. Hyder, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Mr. Lewis has requested this hearing. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Good morning, Judge. All right. For what purpose did you request this hearing? Your Honor, the family retained me last week. As my understanding, they had a detention hearing where some issues were raised, but I've, I've tried to look into them, and I asked the judge to, I mean, the court to reset it in front of you so that we could address those issues again, please. Okay. I mean, this is one where there's a gun show. Off-duty officer from Cedar Hill saw this kid who knew him, and he was in possession of an AK-47 pistol. Okay. So, I mean, what would you like me to, and he's pending aggravated robbery and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon case in Dallas County. So, Mr. Yes, Lewis, sir. What, what I've do done I some, dude, I've checked on the, I'm sorry, Judge. That's okay. It's hard to pick up on this Zoom. Um, I, I've checked into that a little bit, made some phone calls. All I've learned so far, and, and Ms. Brazel can step in if she knows more, but at this point, all I know is it's a uh, referral. Um, no case been filed yet. There's no hold. Um, I've talked to my client about it. I've talked to the family about it. There's just a lot of unanswered questions right now. My concern is that if we hold them here on something that may never transpire in Dallas, we don't even know if it's actually him or if they're going to have probable cause. Um, Dallas can always bring him in for an intake, just like we do here. They can have their detention hearing if they decide that they do want to pursue the case. Um, holding him here on the misdemeanor charge, I think it's just something that's not necessary. His, his parents have the way to have him at home. They've signed him up. He's on virtual school. So even a GPS would allow him to be at home, allow us to know his whereabouts, allow him to attend school. 
And if and when Dallas is ready to pursue those charges, they could then bring him in. Now, one of my, Mr. Lewis, one of my bigger deals is he's a verified member of a gang and he was in possession of a firearm. Like that's, I just don't know at what point, like releasing this child this early on, I'm not convinced that the community is safe. Like, I don't, I don't understand how, I mean. Yes, Judge, I talked to Mr. Bomberg, who has the case about it just prior to this hearing. And it's my understanding that Mr. Hyder has no criminal history. Um, if he's a documented gang member by Cedar Hill with no criminal history, it raises the question from my perspective, how the heck would he know that? I mean, if, if Cedar Hill puts him on a list, if the government puts a citizen on a list but doesn't say you're a documented gang member and he's at a gun show where everyone walking around is holding a gun and he's hold holding hold a gun. I'm not going to assume that everyone under 18 is holding a gun. Yes, Your Honor. I just mean it's not like he's walking in a mall carrying a gun. A gun shows a little bit different circumstance. Yeah, not if you're 16. I mean, I think the only different circumstance if you're under 18 is when there's a responsible adult with you that's supervising you. Yeah, Mr. Lewis, I'm not, you know, if you have a gang member that's I'm seeing judges there. Gun with other gang members, that one, I mean, that just, that, that just smells too bad for me. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm detaining him. I'm just concerned about the safety of the community. I mean, that's the problem for me. You know, I'm, everyone knows me and knows I'm a big fan of guns, but just when kids have guns, and that's a scary, scary thing. So uh, at this point, I'm going to continue to detain him. I, I want to see behavior for him over a period of time instead of just a couple of days uh, to decide whether it's safe to release him to the community or not. Uh, what, Mom, what are his grades like at school? I know he's online, but what are his grades like? Are they all A's? Right now, um, I registered him to start today um, just in case he was released. And so now I'm gonna have to call the school back and let them know that um, I'm gonna take him back out because I'm gonna get in trouble if he's not doing his work. Um, he's, he's enrolled in Fort Worth ISD while he's here. So he's not missing days of credit. Okay. Right? And so I, that makes you feel any better. I hope you understand, I mean, I think I remember talking to you last week and you said you didn't know where the gun came from. Um, I get that, but this is, you know, we, there has to be a certain point where we stop kids from getting involved in gun crimes. And, you know, I'm at a loss, but it seems like the only way is kids that are caught with guns. I'm just very hesitant, very careful about releasing them. It's, it's a very deliberate decision by me, not, not one I just kind of take. I, I really don't err. I always err on the side of caution. So that's just, that's just the way it is in Tarrant County with kids with guns. And so I understand things are different in Dallas County. It's just, you know, I'm the one making the decision here. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to, Brian, we're going to wait a little bit. I just want to see how it is. I mean, I understand it's just a misdemeanor, but these are misdemeanors that are the start to more serious felonies. So just your level one outstanding, keep it up. We'll review this and we'll decide where to go from there. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Brian. Am my excuse, Judge? Yes, thank you, Mr. Lewis. Good to see thank you. you. Good to see you. Okay. Roger Jones. Mr. Jones, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10 day hearing, deciding whether to keep you here or release you. If I keep you here, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Mr. Adniji is. Latif, are you here? No. Okay, we're going to ask Ms. McGonagall to step in. All right, so I do believe. Mr. Yeah, Judge. Oh, hello, Mr. Adniji. All right, Roger, I do believe I was, it's really bothered me that your case is pending for so long and you've been here for a long time. I think I'd let you go over the weekend for a day. Is that right? Or two days? Yes, sir. Got your hair cut. <laughs> so I see that. Mom, how was your time with Roger? Enjoy, Roger. Okay. And, I, and I mean, he have grown so much and I thank you for that time. No, I, I apologize that this case is taking so long. It is because of the coronavirus. That yes, there's this delay. If it was up to me, this would have been resolved a long time ago, one way or another, mm -hmm. right? But I hope you understand the position that I'm in. Yes, sir. But I hope you understand, I, I still understand he's still a kid, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to do what I can mm -hmm. to treat him like a kid. All right, so yes, Roderick, sir. you know, at this point with your case, I, you know, I'm going to detain you, 
all right, we're going to review this. We'll decide. We'll get another pass to get you out on the weekend. Um, I, I don't want you to lose relationships. I don't want your mom to miss out this part of your life as you're growing up. But I hope you understand with the case I'm looking at, I have to just be really, really cautious. But the fact that you, it seemed like, let's see, this is Jorge's case. Jorge, are you here? Yes, sir. All right. So she picked him up on time, returned him on time, right? Yes, sir. Give him a drug test. He's clean, right? That's correct. Okay. So this opens the door for the next time to review this and give you another opportunity like this. All right, Roger? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Yes, sir. Braden Moore. All right, Mr. Moore, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you here or to see you. When a kid comes in, you have to see a judge within two days. If I keep you here, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. And Mr. Newman is your attorney. I don't think Mr. Newman's here today. Uh, Ms. McGonigal, if you can substitute in. Let's see. All right, so Braden, you are 17, just turned 17. You are on probation for unlawfully carrying a weapon in a prohibited place. I'm going to ask Mr. Oxander, where was the prohibited place? Uh, it was his high school, Judge. His high school. Took a gun to school. Uh, I was at Kennedale. The gun was unloaded. I do think that's important. He had the clip. Oh. There, was, there was no Law doesn't distinguish between loaded and unloaded. True. All right. So February 1st, part of your probation, you were placed at Gold Star Academy in spring, through, I guess through CPS. And your managed conservator is OCOK. Do we have somebody from OCOK here? She's here, Judge. Miss Merritt. Oh, hello, Miss Merritt. Hi, okay, so we have placed Braden at Gold Star. And you ran from placement while she was there to pick you up and transport you to a temporary placement. Miss Merritt, why was he leaving Gold Star? Was he? He was being discharged from Gold Star due to his erratic behaviors and his runaways and his stealing from other peers in the facility. So he ran away. Mr. Newman, this is your kid here. Ms. McGonagall was, was covering for you. So he was run. So Gold Star is a non secure facility, I guess. So he ran away from that facility? Correct. He's run oh. away from there and also other facilities in the past. How many times did you run away from Gold Star? Um, I believe only once. Okay. I believe only once. How many times did you run away in total? Total, I'm going to say several, anywhere from possibly uh, five, possibly six. Okay. In total. All right. So while loading up the vehicle, the faculty accused Braden of stealing from the facility and wanted to search you. Then you ran off. Ms. Merritt stayed in the spring looking for Braden for a couple of hours. Couldn't find you, made a runaway report, and then we found out you were picked up in Venus, Texas around two o'clock this morning. You're on probation for NTCAP for UCW. Ms. Merritt, what's in Venus, Texas? Do we know? No, Your Honor, I am unaware of who is in Venus, Texas, whether it could be possibly a family member or a friend. All right, so Braden, I'm gonna lay this out for you. I don't like your shenanigans. You're looking at place, you're looking at a possible commitment on a felony level offense. I'm not gonna release you because I feel like you're just gonna run away from another CPS or OCOK placement. I'm also going to let you know that you're 17 years old. So the law says I have an option of either keeping you in our juvenile facility or in the adult jail downtown. Okay. That is up to you. If you behave here and you're level one, then I will let you stay here at Kimbo. If you're going to cause problems and set a bad example for the other younger kids here at our facility, I'm going to have you housed downtown. So either you get your act together and you behave here and do what you're supposed to do, or we'll send you downtown until your case is resolved. You understand, Mr. Hayden? Mr. Braden yeah. or Mr. Moore, I'm sorry. All right, thank you, Mr. Moore. All right, next we have- Clarify one aspect. Yes. Uh, will I be entitled to a hearing prior to the court's decision? 
as far as whether he's housed downtown or in the detention center? The discretion of the court or what? So the law says if he's detained, then it's my discretion on where he's detained. So. Although I agree with that, I don't know necessarily that our jail itself complies uh, with the necessary provisions of the family code would be my concern. Um, so in the interest of avoiding a writ. No, I, I actually would love a writ on this one. I'm, I'm, I'm confident what's going on. Um, you will keep the second court of, you and I will keep the second court of appeals busy to fix the gaps in the family code, Mr. Newman. Uh, the way I see it, just as a starting point, if you look into it, is the requirements to stay in a juvenile detention facility apply, they're mandated, they're compulsory if a child is 16. And so they're not compulsory at 17. They're prohibited at age 18. I agree with everything the court has just stated. I think where we disagree possibly is whether or not our jail has sufficient uh, policies and locations in place for them to house somebody in this scenario. And right. that's something I need to look into a little bit and research a little more though. Well, I hope Mr. Moore just behaves and it's a non-issue. Uh, uh, agreed. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you, Mr. Newman. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Amaya Pipkins. Ms. Merritt, does that answer your questions? Ms. Merritt? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I was saying thank you, Your Honor. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, if y'all find another placement, let us know, but it'll have to be a secure facility. I definitely will. I definitely Thank will. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ms. Pipkins, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding what, uh, when a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. We have appointed Ms. Johnson as your attorney. Good morning, Carmen. Good to see you. Uh, you're on mute. So. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, Maya. Yes, yeah. years old. You came here back when you were 14 for like a shopping case. Well, here's my question. I guess, Mr. Dotson, did we ask for a drug sample and she refused? No, sir. They had a mix up with the room numbers. They did get it. It was positive for marijuana. Okay. All right. So, are you mom? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I mean, yes, sir. Okay. You know, you know she's smoking weed? Yes, sir. Okay. You don't give her the weed, do you? Uh, no. Oh, okay. okay. All right, so let's see. On Saturday, about two o'clock, Arlington PD brought you in. They were called to the residence of your ex-boyfriend. And you, you said when? Child. You said when? Yeah, mom. Yeah, that <laughs> Sunday, actually, on the seventh. Okay, so. They got there, spoke to Amaya outside, saw damage to a Camaro. She admitted she was upset with her ex and drove her vehicle into his and also struck his vehicle with a tire iron. The victim said he heard you upset outside, went to confront you. We saw you attempting to put coolant in his gas tank. And then you evidently lifted a tire iron to threaten him. He was in fear of his life, but he was worried about getting hurt. He also learned that Maya and your son, his son, were in the backseat of the vehicle when she struck the vehicle. All right, so mom, some questions. How old is this baby? He's one. One. All right. Is there a court order as far as custody of the child? No, no, sir. Okay. Where does the child, do they, I guess they just kind of work it out between them? Yeah, I guess. Well, well hold on. Your grandma, what do you mean you guess? Does she not, does she okay. live with you? Yeah. Yes. Yes, so sir. How, I mean, it's your one-year-old grandbaby. How do you not know what their agreement is? They've been working it out. I get the baby and the other grandma will get the baby. Both of them. We just, we just been working it out that way. Wait, the boyfriend's 21? They met when they was like in high school. When she got to the ninth grade to Bowie High School, that's when they hooked up. 
She was in the ninth grade and he was in the 12th. Did they intend to get married? <laughs> they, that was their plans. They talked about it. They had dreams. Does she have any other children? No, sir. Kind of outside the window, but it's possible. Is she still breastfeeding, or is she breastfeeding? He's he's on table food now. Okay. Mom, do you know what the argument was about? No, no, sir. Is she respectful for you to you at home? Yes, yeah, she's she's respectful. Smoke weed around the baby? Huh? Does she smoke weed I around the baby? Seen, I never seen her smoke weed around the baby. I, actually, I have never seen her smoke weed. Maya, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and order your release, but there's conditions. I'm going to place you on electronic monitor that you are to be nowhere, not to be within 500 feet <clears throat> of your child's father's home. And you are not to have any contact with either him or your daughter or your child. My right? child, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm saying no contact no. with this child. <laughs> my child. That, 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 that can't, that can't, that can't. I think the baby lives with the grandmother. Yeah, yeah, I do me. Uh, 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 Maya, stop talking. Okay. He, he's he's going to come, the baby come back with her. <laughs> And we're gonna work this thing out the way that we've been doing. Not if the child was in the car, <laughs> but if she ran a car into that car, if yeah. it actually happened. Well, she uh, well, she was living there at one point. And she gave it back to me due to I don't want to go off and everything else. We're gonna keep it here. So Maya and the baby is that there with back with me. You said she was living with you. Uh, at I've been my records where I've been evicted. It, I have a lot of stuff that's going on. But they said, keep it focused on what we are talking about right now in Somalia. Everything is out of my control. Where was she living? She was living there. Well, what? But you told me she was living with you. She's living with me now. What do you mean by now? I was evicted back in 2000. Mama, that has nothing to do. They 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 kicked it. I I was with um him. He wants to, but I have to I have to tell you. Know, so you yeah, Maya, on the phone. Stop talking. You two can talk on the phone. Okay, right, what did so. she she left her house January the first, two thousand and nine uh two thousand this year. Two thousand, yeah, January first. Well then I'll tell you what, if that's the case, and that's not possible, then I'm going to go and detain you, Maya. Huh? Huh? Wait, what? You said that you said you're not going to do that. Mom said that's not possible, so I don't trust. Oh, no, I, I didn't hear that. So, Mom, she don't know right. what, explain it to her. She don't know what you're talking We'll about. review this, and we'll make a decision later on. But if yeah. I release you, it's going to be on electronic monitor with random your analysis, no contact with the adult victim <laughs> or your daughter. And then, I can't adjust that. I just want a cool off period to make sure that it's safe to make 
sure it's safe that the. No, <laughs> the right. Okay. Out there like days, days. Uh, hold on, hello, sir. So we'll review this. No, I want, I want my baby yeah. to come home. <laughs> I, I've made my decision. There's no point in me talking and explaining myself. Diana Valdez. <laughs> what did you do, Mama? Give us one second, sir. What did you do? Ms. Johnson, I'm, I mean, I you understand where I'm coming from this one, right? I can't my hand. Sorry. I'll bring her back in a, in a couple of days. And they have a better plan in place. I'm totally okay with that. Just get me, make sure that there's a cool off period that, I'm, that I don't have to worry about the, the child. Just impulsive decisions. Um, just because we're dealing with a one-year-old baby. But I don't want her either. Right. Your Honor, it's going to be a moment before we get the next due set. Uh, no, he may ask me to take it off. Judge, uh, you're next one, sir. All right, Ms. Valdez, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you here or release you. But keep you, you have to see a judge every 10 days. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to attorney. Mr. Beaver is your attorney. Yes. Mr. Beaver, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. All right, Diana. So on Sunday, you were, well, let's look back. So you were, hey, never been here before. Fourth PD brought you in. They're saying about 840. They noticed a white Nissan Altima pass at a high rate of speed, about 80 miles an hour off 28th Street, right around the corner. All right. So they tried to do a traffic stop, vehicle continued into a residential area at 65 miles an hour. And shortly after the vehicle came to stop, three female occupants, two juveniles, one adult, were discovered in the car and detained. Field sobriety test on all three. And Diana was the driver of the Altima, which belonged to adult female passenger. They found empty Smirnoff bottles in the vehicle. Marijuana residue. Do you have a parent here? Your Honor, I believe that the mother is not planning on attending today. Diana, you look familiar. Have I seen you before? This is my first time here. First time here. Mr. Ortiz? Yes, Your Honor. What do we do? Um, Have you made contact with the mom? Have you talked to her? Yes, yes, I did. You know I why she. With, I spoke with the mom. She's expressed her concerns about um, Diana running away and also uh, being involved with uh, some substance abuse as a result of mom's request and also uh, that she tested positive for marijuana. Uh, I went ahead and submitted a substance abuse referral. And so I'm hope, hoping to wait to, to see if we can uh, get that completed and figure out what kind of services to provide. What about in the meantime, meanwhile, what do we do? What do we do with Diana? Mom has refused to um, just participate for today. Uh, my, my hope is that we can reconnect her with mom so that services can be provided in the community. That's my hope. Uh, but as far as today, I, I think if we were to have her detained, we could probably have uh, the substance abuse referral completed while she's here in our custody. Your Honor, I, I agree with Mr. Ortiz. I spoke to the mother this morning also, and she is, is really frustrated with, with what's going on. And, and hopefully she'll be on a, a position where she's more welcoming to have Diana return home. 
I mean, Diana, I don't know what the story is, what's going on. Like, I don't know, like, what demons you have in your life. But what you have to understand that every decision you make has a consequence, okay? Every single one. So if it's a being disrespectful to your mom, there's a consequence. Running away, there's a consequence. Not studying, there's a consequence, right? I don't think you're a bad person. I just think it looks like you're just going to do what you want to do and you don't worry about the consequences. That's just what it looks like to me right now, okay? Right now, I have to detain you because I can't put a girl out on 28th Street just to walk the streets, okay? So we need to figure out what to do with you. So I'm letting you know I'm detaining you, but hopefully, my hope is you're using this chance to make some better decisions to figure out how you got here and how you keep from coming back here again. Okay, is that fair enough? I'm not trying to be your dad. I'm not trying to be a counselor. I'm just letting you know as a judge, the way it's looking out for me, and you probably have something you thought about last night while you're here, and just you have a little more, more time to think about it. But just figure out somewhere along the way you made a wrong turn. Just figure out how you get back on the right, right road, okay? All right, thanks, Deanna. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Van Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Beaver. No, no, we're, we're good, Deanna. Mr. Wilson, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. You've been here for 10 days, so I'm deciding whether to keep you over if I order to release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to be silent. You have a right to an attorney. Your attorney, Ms. Sherman. How many are you here? Ms. Hammer. Oh, Ms. Hamrick. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on the wrong line. Hello, Melissa. Good to see you. Right. Jamean, you're level one outstanding. You have been for about a week. This is... See, Black Ultima, Eileen in the driveway, knocked on the door, made contact. Talk to your girlfriend. She's been living with you, share a bedroom with the baby. Oh, arguing about a car that you had purchased. She said, she said that you punched her several times. She said you pulled out a gun. Later on, police came, living room, and then they found a gun on you. And you are documented with the district attorney's office as a gang member. And they found the box to the gun in your room. And this is while you were on probation for aggravated robbery. Man, the fact that you're on probation for aggravated robbery, which means at a certain point you used a gun. Mr. Handy, can you keep the bright light from behind your head? Right, it just, yeah, it just shadows out your face. It's the reflection coming off that white paper. So if you're like that, it's fine. All right, so Mr. Wilson, the fact that you're on probation means that you are willing to point a gun at somebody and put them in fear. And so it just gives me extra pause on this case. Do we have a parent here for Mr. Wilson? The parent was notified. I spoke with her on last week and she was supposed to be here. So this gives me extra concern. Honestly, we're talking, the situations we're talking about, aggravated robbery and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The only more serious thing from here is actually somebody being shot and killed, right? So I just, I'm not comfortable releasing yet. It's a matter of time. One week on level one outstanding is not enough to convince me, but Eventually, you could get there. There are kids that, no matter how serious the crime is, that they do convince me to let them go. This is a safety issue more than anything else. All right, Mr. Wilson? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. All right, so at this point, I am going to let Judge Porter conclude this docket. Thank you, Judge Porter. Thank you, Judge Kim. Right. Daniel Garcia. Are you Mr. Garcia? Yes, sir. Mr. Garcia, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. And your attorney, Mr. Adler, is here. You see him on the screen. Where is he at? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Adler. All right. The 
court has previously found that probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in delinquent conduct sufficient to warrant your initial detention. According to the Fort Worth Police Department, um, your current girlfriend and your ex-girlfriend got in a fight. A uh, fight got broken up, but then shots got fired. Um, you've been level 1-0 this morning. Mr. Adler, what are your thoughts? Judge, I think the mom is present. The mom has a really good plan if you would release them on the electronic monitor under strict house arrest, or I guess we call it house arrest. He can go to school virtually. Judge, uh, this is a good family. Uh, they have siblings at home that are uh, in the community, doing well in the community. They work, they go to school. Mom's never been in a situation like this. So I, I'm pretty sure this mom can assure you that if he violates any part of your conditions of release, if you were to release him, she would call the probation officer immediately. Uh, we realize how serious this charge is, but uh, judge, if we can just order him at home to stay at home, uh, that's what the parent would be. That's what the mom would be asking for today. All right. Thank you, Mr. Adler. Thank you, judge. Um, the, Given that shots were fired and he's only been level 1-0 since this morning, the court is not yet convinced that if I were to release him, he would not be a danger to the community. And so on that basis, um, I'm going to order he be detained. Um, we'll reconsider this in 10 days. So, uh, Mr. Garcia, you need to keep and maintain level 1-0 before I'll even begin to consider your release, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That'll be the order of the court. Thank so, you, Your Honor. Okay. Jordan Gibson. Judge, can I be excused? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Adler. Thank you, sir. Judge, I believe the parent is in the lobby. All right. Uh, Ms. Paxton, are they bringing the parent to the? Yes, I, can, I just saw Daniel come out. Mom was supposed to be here. Yes. He She's here. She's taking her time. But... Good morning, Ms. Gibson. My name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every business day, 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10 day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney, your attorney. Ms. Denno is here. Do you see Ms. Denno on the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. <coughs> um, has she completed the psychological evaluation that was previously ordered? She completed a psychiatric. Okay, psychiatric. Yes, and she has been prescribed medication. Okay. <coughs> um, Ms. Denno, did you want to ask mom some questions? So I have talked to the mother uh, on Friday. She had been visiting with her daughter each day by phone. She's aware of what, what her daughter's diagnosis is and that she's taking medication. Um, she's indicated that she feels comfortable with her daughter coming home and would be asking for her to be able to be released today. I did also talk with Jordan. Um, she is taking the medication. Uh, she's been doing well in detention and, and she would like to go home with her mother. Ms. Paxton, is this... Uh, Ms. Gibson's first referral? It is, Your Honor. Mom, do you have any concerns about Jordan running away? No, not running away. No, sir. Okay. What are your concerns? Uh, just to continue the medication to, um, um, you know, like she, like she might feel like it's not working yet, but, you know, you have to continue um, to take it. And that's my concern, her continuing to take her medicine to get better that's all have you and jordan talked about the medication yes yes and has she told you that she's willing to do her part absolutely yes all right uh then miss deno i'm gonna go ahead and authorize her release since mom's not afraid of her running away we'll give it a try without the electronic monitor um now miss gibson it's your responsibility to do two things First, you gotta take your medic medication that's prescribed. And second, I want you to talk to your mom every day about how the medication makes you feel. And it may go up and down, 
and that's okay. But every day I want you to talk to your mom how the medication makes you feel. And that way you and your mom together can remember those details to help your doctor find everything that's gonna help you, okay? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, that'll be the order of the court. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Paxton. Andrew Jordan Handy. Yes, sir. All right, hold on just a second. All right, Mr. Handy, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10 day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney, <coughs> excuse me. And Mr. Gladstone, your attorney is here. All right, I see that you've been, the court has previously found that probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in delinquent conduct sufficient to warrant your initial detention based on a directive to apprehend. Um, you're currently on probation and you've been level 10 since the 14th of last month. You have a hearing before me next week on the 18th. And I will note that uh, you, brought, you, got, you brought in this time for an electronic monitor violation. Mr. Gladstone, what are your thoughts? Uh-oh, you're on mute, Mr. Gladstone. Let's get you unmuted. There we go. Which child is this, Judge? I just got on board. That's okay. It's Andrew Jordan Handy, and I do believe his dad, Henry, is also here appearing by Zoom. Yes, sir. I'm hoping to get him home. I, I know there was a problem between uh, him and his family somewhat, but I'd like to get him home on a monitor pending the hearing, see how he does. Well, last time I let him go on the monitor, he decided to cut it off. Yeah, I realized he decided that, to, that he was going to uh, not do the chores that his dad had assigned to him and use some choice words and expressing to his father the displeasure of being assigned any chores. And given the fact that he's violated the EM in the past, um, given the fact that he's on probation currently, given the fact that he has a hearing before me next week, even though he's been level 10 almost consistently for a month, I'm, I'm not sure he'll come back next week when he's supposed to. And Your Honor, I'm sorry, may I correct you? He's not on probation right now. He's pending a burglary of a building. That's what he's going to court for. His probation expired previously. And so oh. he's pending for a burglary of a building and an um, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. Which oh. is at the same time as the EM violation. Thank you for that technical clarification. All right, I'm going to order that you be detained, Mr. Handy. We'll see you next week. All right, thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Happy late birthday, Andrew. Oh, that's right. His birthday was yesterday. I'm, I apologize for. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Ms. Smith. Good. All right, are you Ms. Smith? Yes, sir. Ms. Smith, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10 day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney and your attorney, Ms. Johnson is here. Do you see her on the screen? Um, no. Carmen, can you say good morning? Morning, you see my hand? I can hear her, but I can't see her. All right, they probably have a limited view on the computer in detention. All right, the court has previously found that probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in delinquent conduct sufficient to warrant your initial detention. Um, you've been level 1-0 since yesterday and you have a hearing before me next week. Ms. Johnson, what are your thoughts? Your Honor, um, the alleged victim in one of these offenses does not wish to prosecute, and we've let the uh, district attorney's office know that. I'm not sure what they're going to do about that. Um, and there seems to be some other issues with the other part of the petition, but it was my understanding her mother wanted her home. Does she have a parent or guardian here today? 
Your Honor, I did speak with the parent on last week. She was supposed to have been here. Okay. So I would ask that you release her to her mother um, when the probation officer is able to get in touch with her again. I know her mother works nights, so this would be the time that she was probably asleep. And I'm concerned that that might be part of the problem. Ms. Washington, does Ms. Smith have prior referrals to the department? Yes, she does, Your Honor. And that was for? She was just, she just completed the uh, probation of um, a solemn a public servant, that probation, she completed it on January the 7th of this year. And she was on probation for a year and that was out of Judge Smith's court? Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> and Your Honor, she did have for the FYI, she did have a psychiatric evaluation. She has her medications, um, trazodone, Zoloft, and Abilify, and she has been taking them. Okay. She had a psychological evaluation that was conducted on the 2nd. That report is due back on the 9th, which is tomorrow. Okay. The mom had had some trouble getting the MHMR appointment to get the meds, and so they did it through juvenile probation. And Ms. Washington, you've talked with mom and she's willing to come get Ms. Smith? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, I'm going to authorize her release, but I'll do so on the electronic monitor, given the fact that she was on a previous probation for an assault of offense. Um, uh, Ms. Washington, let me check one more thing. Uh, I also either want her released on a sweat patch or to come in for weekly UAs. Given the fact that she was brought in a month ago and tested positive. So... All right. All right. That'll be the order of the court. Thank you, Ms. Washington. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Delange, medicine every day as prescribed. Yes, ma'am. All right. Make sure you come back to court next week, Ms. Smith, okay? All right. Hey, Your Honor, did you order a uh, sweat patch and random UAs or just one or the other? One or the other, and I'll let y'all decide which is going to work best for her. You can do okay, the sweat you. patch. Sweat patch? Yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. I would prefer that, but I, I know that um, there, with COVID and everything, there are different restrictions going on. All right, Lionel Taylor, are you Mr. Taylor? Yes, sir. Mr. Taylor, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 businesses thereafter. This is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. And your attorney, Mr. Gladstone, is here. I will note that the court has previously found that probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in delinquent conduct sufficient to warrant your initial detention. You've been level 1-0 for the last four days. <clears throat> and according to the police report, Fort Worth PD responded to a domestic disturbance on the 23rd of January. Upon arrival, they met with your mother and she informed officers that she returned home and uh, was informed by the 11-year-old nephew that, that you had slapped the 11-year-old nephew on the head when he did not get out of the chair that you wanted to sit in. When mom confronted you, he pushed you pushed her and slapped her allegedly. Mm -hmm. Okay then also threatened to kill her. Um, can, I say, can, I, can I say something? Uh, no, you have the right to remain silent. And I imagine Mr. Gladstone wants you to keep quiet for right now. Okay. I agree. Uh, I agree. I know. Nope. No positive UAs. All right, Mr. Gladstone, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Judge, is there a parent here today? No, Your Honor. Okay. My understanding is... My understanding is uh, the mother is refusing to accept parental responsibility. Um, a CPS case was already opened. Um, so a new 
report has not yet been filed for that particular refusal. Uh, however, CPS has instructed me to go ahead and try to file another report. Um, In my, yeah, my understanding that CPS, uh, CPS representative came out and spoke to my client and had a conversation. So I guess I'm, if, if, Parent is not uh, willing to take him back. I'm looking for the option of maybe placing him in a, a boy's home or CPS care to get him out of here. All right, um, Mr. Gutchison, Mr. Gladstone, let's give mom until Wednesday to change her mind. Uh, and I want mom and CPS or one or the other here on Wednesday. Uh, Mr. Taylor, if, uh, wait, Mr. Victorson, does he have any prior referrals to the department? No, Your Honor. My understanding is that the family moved here December of 2020 from okay. Missouri. Okay. Um, Mr. Taylor, you're at level 1-0. You have been the last four days. I want you to maintain that until Wednesday. You do that, and that gives me a good reason to think that it would be okay to release you. However, um, we're going to uh, give your mom a chance on Wednesday, and if mom's not here, then I'll release him to, o to CPS, all right, as long as he's still level 1-0, okay? Question of clarification, Your Honor? Yes, sir. You want her in the building, or can she Zoom? She can Zoom in. All right, yes, sir. But I want to give her one more chance to rethink this decision. All right, Mr. Gladstone, will that work? No work, thanks, Judge. All right, thank y'all. All right, Mr. Thompson. Uh, give him a second, sir. He's in quarantine. They're walking the laptop down to him. That'll work. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that Wednesday? Ugh. I have had days like that. What time did I tell you? Noon. All right. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> All right, almost there, almost there. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> All right, Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. All right. Nice and loud. Good. I can hear you. Mr. Thompson, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10 day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. And uh, I don't see Mr. Graham here. So I'm going to ask Ms. McGonigal to step in on your attorney's behalf. Um, so the court has previously found that probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in delinquent conduct sufficient to warrant your initial detention. Um, on January 24th, you were referred in custody by the Fort Worth Police Department for unlawfully carrying a handgun, more specifically a pistol. And Fort Worth, Fort Worth police officers observed uh, five juvenile males quickly exit a Chevy Tahoe Walk into a convenience store. A few moments later, officers observed the, excuse me, Taco, qu Tahoe quickly exit the parking lot, driving at a high rate of speed. And so they pulled him over. Officers told the other, well, let's see. Oh, report of a robbery. Oh, this just gets worse and worse. Um, eventually, the officer detained you and observed a silver 380 lying in the grass next to the building and gun was recovered all right excuse me sir 
told you to wait till he finished talking. Okay. Um, so you have been level 10 since the 27th of last month. That's great. You have a prior DPP for state jail felony theft and misdemeanor evading arrest. Um, Mr. Uh, Dotson, when did he complete that DPP? July 24, 2020. Okay, so more, nearly six months ago before the current referral, correct? Yes. Okay, and are you mom? Yes, I'm mom. How you doing? I'm better than I deserve, mom. Mom, what's going on? He um, got caught up with the wrong people and the wrong crowd. Trailing is not like that, I promise you. And I'm here to help him and support him in all matters. I just think, you know, he needed to sit down for them little 10 days to get his mind and stuff cleared, which is good. But I'm pretty sure if you release him today, sir, everything will go good farther than that. I well, just he's got a hearing before me next week, right? I'm 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 not for sure. He do on the 16th. Oh, okay, on the 16th. Okay. Okay. Now you understand I'm really scared that he was he already had a DPP for what we call a state jail felony. Uh-huh. And now he's caught with another weapon. You understand how that kind of scares me? Yes, I do. I do. I do understand how you scared, but you don't you wouldn't have to worry about that. You wouldn't I do have, have to worry about I that. Mean, That's my job. Yeah, I know. I understand that. I know. And I'm sorry for saying that you don't have to worry about that, but I'm just saying he had got caught up with the wrong people in the wrong crowd at the wrong time. Where, where'd you get the gun? You want to speak, Traylon? Oh, yeah. no, I'm not asking him. Oh, okay. I'm not asking him. I'm asking you, Mom, where'd he get the gun? From my understanding, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. Did did you give it to him? I didn't I didn't give him no, I wouldn't dare give him a gun. He's a he's a minor. I wouldn't dare do that. And that ain't that ain't like trailing to even carry a gun to be, you know, be around stuff like that. He wasn't raised like that. I I, I and and I know for sure I felt like. Oh, I can't even get my thoughts together. But I know for sure that I didn't raise him like that. He know better than it. He know way better than it. Well, and it really, it really, it really messed me up when I heard the charges about um the gun and that they try to put everything on him about robbing. So he don't do that. Mom, let me ask you something. If I were to release him, I would be releasing him to your custody. Yes. And I, and if he doesn't come back to court next week, if he cuts off an electron monitor and runs, two bad things can happen. The first one is I will issue a warrant for his arrest. Mm -hmm. That concerns him. Second bad thing concerns you. I could issue a warrant for your arrest that results in you being taken to the Tarrant County Jail. And you would be held there until Traylon turns himself in which that might be a day, that might be six months while he's on the run. Are you willing to go to jail for him? I know for sure if you release him, we wouldn't even have to worry about all of it. You see what I'm saying? Cause he's not gonna do none of it. We talk, I talk to him every day. He got, I feel like he got his mind together. You know how people got to go through stuff to see stuff? And I, and, I, and I pray that he see, it seems like he see that them people that who he was around ain't meant for him. But mom, we know kids, they do things impulsively. He runs away. No, just, I'm just saying, he, he's not going to, uh, and but if I you gotta ask him a you, second chance. But I, well, he had, the, he was on DPP. And he successfully I get, completed I, I get, it. I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying, can you have faith in me for my son? That's what all he, I'm asking you. Can you have faith in me for my son? Where does he go to school? He, they was going to Trimble Tech. Okay. How are his grades? His grades is good. What does good mean? 
um, a, um, the lowest grade he had got was an 89. In what was, class? Um, he really not good at math, but like reading and all the other stuff is, is, is good. But his brother helped him as well. They both, they both in the ninth grade. So they, you know, help each other. How's his brother? His brother is 14. Okay. So Trylon's a year behind in school? Um, yeah, I had held him back in elementary so he could, you know, because he wasn't um, catching on like the other student was in his grade level. So I held him back. All I'm just saying, if you if you just work with me, have faith in me, put my safe for my son, you won't even have to worry about this. And yes, I do. I will want I will want to uh, monitor for him. I'm a single parent. It's kind of hard, but I I know what I need to do for him. Me and him already had a long talk. I hate that he got to go through this, but I'm telling you, if you have faith in me, you won't even have to worry about seeing us again until the 16th. That's the next year, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm just here. That's all I asked of you. He not no trouble, kid. Where is he getting the marijuana, mom? I'm not for sure about that, but you know what? I was working nights. My manager switched me over to mornings so I can watch them more closely. I'm just telling you all the things that I'm going to be doing to prevent all this because I was working at nights. I mean, I had my brother and him to go check up on him while I'm at work and stuff, but you know, I still have to work at the end of the day, but all that stuff he was doing and whatever he was doing and who he was you, around, it, it won't be like that. Do you work on Saturdays, mom? No. I had her to request me off on Sundays because I told her that's family time. But I asked her, you know, just to work. She know what's going on with my son because I communicate with my boss. Mom, mom, that didn't answer my question. Do you work on Saturday nights? I don't work, I don't work on Saturday nights no more. I was before. I need when's, to be the last, when's the last time you worked on Saturday night? Um, maybe like two weeks ago. Maybe like two weeks ago. Mr. Victor Dotson, sorry, Mr. Dotson. Yes, sir. This is this is his fourth referral. Yes, I, I think that included a uh, one of them prevention intervention uh, situations. Also, let me make sure. What what was that prevention intervention? It's a program that they do for young kids. That I guess, like in her case, single mom. Uh, it, it's a intervention program to try to help. Traylon, I guess, because his dad wasn't there to not go down down this path. Uh, that's my understanding with that program. That, I don't know. I don't know how he qualified for it. I don't. I don't know. Uh, that was in 2015, and yeah. he didn't have anything until his previous DPP for evading and theft. He had evading in, in June of 2019. That was supervised caution. Then in August is when he had the theft property and uh, other one that he got TPP for. Oh, I'm see, I'm showing the offense date of June 23rd. Yeah. Okay. They, well, they put them together then. Okay. Because uh, okay. the first referral was June 23rd for the evading, but the other referral with the uh, theft of property was in August. So they DPP both of those together. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
well, in the process, they they supervised caution to evade it and they put them on DPP for their theft, looks like. I'm going to authorize his release on the sweat patch and the electronic monitor. Um, he's on house arrest until he has to come to court next week. Uh, if he has a single EM violation, Mr. Dotson, please let me know and I will issue the DTA. I will also um, consider whether or not to issue a warrant for mom's arrest. Is, Mom, I'm going to release him to you. You're responsible for making sure he stays at home. Um, doesn't go anywhere. If he wants to go to church, he can watch church online. Okay, so we can't go to church. Just watch it online. You can watch it online at, at least until the hearing next week. Okay. I have a question and then, for you. Then I'll consider, I'll consider adjusting that next week on whether or not he can go to church in person, okay? Okay, I, okay, I have one more question. So he, he can't leave the house, period. Period. Unless he's got a doctor's appointment, then Mr. Dotson is verified. That's the only thing. He needs to be doing school virtually. Okay, yeah, they do that. They do that now. They have started doing virtual. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh huh. So I expect him to be completing the class with a tremble, like you tell me he'd be doing. Yes, sir. yes, sir. And I expect his, I expect that math grade to go from 89 to 90 next week, okay? We trying to get it there. We All trying right, to get it there. The court. You know, you, you, you said sweat patch? You want a sweat, sweat patch? patch? And, and electronic monitor. Thanks, sir. All right. Um, don't bring them in the next child, please. Uh, Section 5408 of the Texas Family Code provides that when a child or children is under the age of 14, the hearings are to be closed to the public. And 